Hey, Dr. Morgan Nolte here, founder of Zivly and the Reshape Your Health podcast. We help you lower insulin resistance for long-term weight loss and better health. In this video, you'll learn what fatty liver disease is and the most important diet tip to reverse it. The liver carries out many tasks, including processing nutrients absorbed from the gut and controlling the levels of glucose, fat, and protein in the blood. It stores carbohydrates as glycogen and has a limited amount of fat. Most liver cells can metabolize almost all types of nutrients. This is important because most other cells in the body cannot metabolize alcohol or fructose, so the liver cells do the heavy lifting for those nutrients. A healthy liver cell contains a nucleus at its center and evenly distributed fat droplets. A healthy liver is dark red in color and silky to the touch. When fat droplets start to accumulate in the liver cells, it's called fatty liver disease. There are two main types. Alcoholic fatty liver disease is due to heavy alcohol use and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or NAFLD is caused by eating too much sugar, specifically too much fructose. For the purposes of this discussion, we'll treat them as the same condition. Fatty liver disease, whether from excess sugar, alcohol, or both, occurs in three phases. The first is simply called fatty liver. This is where you have fat in your liver, but little to no inflammation or liver cell damage. About 25% of the U.S. population have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This is an astounding rise in cases. The second phase is an inflamed fatty liver with some liver cell damage. This is called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH. Up to 30% of people with NAFLD will develop NASH. Scarring or fibrosis occurs as collagen fibers replace dead cells. What's important to know about NAFLD and NASH is there are no obvious symptoms. We'll talk about risk factors in a minute. But note that both NAFLD and NASH are still reversible. If you can remove fat from the liver, most commonly via weight loss, the inflammation will resolve and the liver function will return to normal. The liver is a highly resilient organ. When a healthy person donates a portion of their liver, both the donor and recipient end up with an almost full-sized, fully functional liver within about eight weeks of surgery. But if NASH is not kept in check or reversed, the damage and the scarring may progress to the final stage of fatty liver disease, which is cirrhosis. With cirrhosis, dead liver cells are broken down and scar tissue accumulates, which stiffens the liver and impairs its function. This happens in about 11% of patients with NASH. It now begins to affect the cellular architecture of the organ, making it much more difficult to reverse. A patient with cirrhosis is likely to die from various complications of their failing liver unless they receive a liver transplant. In 2001, NASH officially accounted for just over 1% of the liver transplants in the U.S., but by 2025, it's expected to be the leading indication for liver transplantation. As devastating as the trajectory of fatty liver is, cirrhosis is not the only end point to be worried about. As Dr. Peter Atia says in his excellent book, Outlive, type two diabetes is technically a distinct disease defined very clearly by glucose metrics, but I view it as simply the last stop on the railway line passing through several other stations, including hyperinsulinemia, prediabetes, and NAFLD and NASH. This will become even more apparent when you learn that being insulin resistant is the strongest known predictor of developing NAFLD increasing the risk of having it by 15 times compared with an insulin sensitive person. While almost all obese individuals have NAFLD, even lean people, if insulin resistant, have a substantially greater risk of developing the condition. We'll link to a video on the end screen for how to test for insulin resistance. Aside from insulin resistance, NAFLD is highly correlated with both obesity and hyperlipidemia or excessive cholesterol. NAFLD increases in prevalence with body mass index and is more common in men. This chart shows that as BMI increases, so does the prevalence of NAFLD. 
Aside from knowing your degree of insulin resistance, it's also good to check for another early sign of fatty liver disease. This is the liver enzyme ALT. Rising levels of ALT are often the first clue that something is wrong with the liver, although they could also be a symptom of something else, such as a recent viral infection or a reaction to a medication. But there are so many people walking around whose physicians have no idea that they are in the early stages of fatty liver disease because their ALT levels are still normal. According to Lab4, a leading testing company, the acceptable range for ALT is below 33 international units per liter for women and 45 for men, although those ranges can vary from one lab to another. But normal is not the same as healthy. The reference ranges for these tests are based on current percentiles, but as the population in general becomes less healthy, the average may diverge from optimal levels. It's similar to what has happened with weight. In the late 1970s, the average American adult male weighed 173 pounds. Now they weigh 200 pounds. In the 1970s, a 200 pound man would have been considered very overweight, and today he's merely average. So you can see how in the 21st century, average is not optimal. The College of Gastroenterology recently revised its guidelines to recommend clinical evaluation for liver disease in men with an ALT above 33 and for women above 25, which is significantly below the current normal ranges. Dr. Peter Atia's book highlights a study that suggested upper limits of 30 for men and 19 for women for optimal ALT levels. So even if your liver function tests land within the reference range, that does not imply that your liver is actually healthy. If you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, the best thing that you can do for your liver is to eat less fructose and drink less alcohol. Now the fructose can come from any type of sugar. Table sugar is half glucose and half fructose. But as you can see in this table, other types of sweeteners often thought to be healthier than table sugar like juice, honey, and agave actually have more fructose. So all types of sugar need to be reduced in the diet, especially in liquid form. Liquid sugars are absorbed faster than solid sugars. So the first line of defense against fatty liver disease is to reduce or eliminate alcohol and sugar sweetened beverages like pop, soda, juice, fubu coffee drinks, and sweetened alcoholic beverages. After that, work to reduce your regular added sugar intake. This is easier when you understand what else to eat besides sugar or processed food. If you need help learning what to eat to lower insulin resistance and reduce your risk for fatty liver disease, take our insulin resistance diet starter course linked below. If you found this video helpful, please take a moment to subscribe and don't forget to watch this video about how to test for insulin resistance and this one about eight insulin resistance diet tips to lower insulin fast.